This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now, I hesitated about saying that today because it's pouring cats and dogs. But there's a teaching in that. God makes and blesses every day, whether it's pouring cats and dogs or the pouring sunshine. The bottom line is, is he's always there. And so we need to praise his name in all situations. So uh, this is the day that he has made. Um, this morning, I've got several announcements. First, you may notice Joe and Tina are here today, Joe and Tina Rhodes. Uh, Tina spoke with us back in December, and she's going to speak with us again today about the Holy Spirit. And so there are two handouts. One is a copy of the one that she gave out that was given out in December. So if you didn't get that or you misplace it and you want it, we've got that available. And the other is uh, the, the passages, if you will, of the scriptures that talk about, or, or, or excuse me, aspects of the Holy Spirit in our lives, sort of to jar our memory. And so that too is at the uh, entrance of the church. So if you don't have one, this would be a wonderful opportunity to scoot up there and get one or pick one up at the end of the service. So I want to let you know that there are handouts available. Walter has them. He's got them. And he's, if you'll raise your hand, he'll bring them to you. Okay? Um, secondly, Lewis Jackson, man over there in the beard, uh, he's going to be available at the end of the service, at the entrance of the church, to speak with anyone who wants to join the team that's going to Harriet and Glenn Kirkland's house early Monday morning to work on their porch, both the front and the back. And so if you're interested in doing that or, or, or wanting more information, please speak with Lewis at the conclusion of the service, uh, and he will be glad to welcome you. He's even welcomed me, and you all know I can barely nail a hammer. Uh, a hammer, you know what I'm saying. Um, you've heard me or, or saw in my email, I hope, that I would love your prayers for our outreach ministries here at Holy Cross. I've received a response already uh, from Meg, but uh, we have, uh, for 2023, it's on my heart that we not just take care of ourselves and worship together, but that we go out to love and serve the Lord in Christ's name. And that going out and serving the Lord in Christ's name is outreach ministry. And so I want you to please pray about that. If there's something tugging on your heart, come share that with me or a member of the vestry. Um, one that is already tugging on some of our hearts is the fifth Saturday lunch uh, um, sandwich ministry. Uh, that was started by Teresa and Milton Corley. And then when they moved to Myrtle Beach, uh, Father Joel and Lynn Osborne picked it up, but after Lynn's death, Joel is deciding rightfully to sort of step away from that. And so that's a ministry that really, if it's going to move forward and continue, someone needs to say, I'm on board with that, and actually more than someone. And so we need to pray about that, that sandwich ministry. We need to pray about any other ministries, like the occasional going and cooking uh, supper for the folks uh, at the homeless shelter. So, so think about those, pray about those, get back to me. Also, hospitality after the service today is next door. Please go to that. And there's a hospitality sign-up sheet as well as a flower sign-up sheet. And so I invite you to, to look over and pray over those dates for either flowers and or um, hospitality and feel free to be part of. It can be as simple as one cookie and one punch or as complicated as three cookies and three punches, okay? You, you, you know, we're, we're, anything you want to do. Um, speaking of flowers, Marge is here today, and the flowers are given in honor of her deceased husband, Abe, of fond memory, and of her father. And so the flowers are given in their honor today and in thanksgiving for their lives and witness. We have a short vestry meeting right after the service today where we have a budget ready to be approved and so if the vestry will just simply join with me very quickly uh, we, we don't I said I printed out that we meet upstairs we can actually just pull together downstairs real quick and have a meeting to approve the the uh, the uh, annual uh, the budget for this coming this year uh, speaking of budgets and so forth 
Um, annual meeting is the 12th of February. It's a potluck. We'll have a sign-up sheet for next week for we can sort of try not to duplicate everybody bringing fried chicken and nothing else. But if you want to, I'm a big fan, so that's okay by me. Um, Diocesan Convention is the 10th and 11th of March, and so we need to be praying about that. Because at the annual meeting, we elect members of the vestry, and we elect four people to go as delegates to convention and four alternates. And so please pray about that. I do have good news that Kathy Brown and Harvey Center have both agreed to stand for vestry, so that we've got that covered. We have two openings. We've got two people who will agree to stand, so that's uh, filled. But we still need four people to say, I will go to convention. And convention this year, which again is March 10th and 11th, it's really, really important that you come to both days, and it's in Bluffton, so that's an overnight, because Bishop Chip sent out a letter uh, just this past week, and he basically says that the convention is going to be loaded up on the front end, which is Friday, and a lot of, his, in fact, his, his, um, his annual speech will be part of the sermon at worship on Friday night. So we need to be able to attend both Friday and Saturday, March 10th and 11th. So if you've got that time available, if you're willing to serve, please let me know. We have that as our uh, elections uh, for on, on our date of February 12th. Are there any announcements that I've forgotten? Yes, Gary. Men's group, Thursday night, 6.30 downstairs in Cramner Hall. Six. Six downstairs in Cramner Hall. Yes, ma'am. Uh, at this meeting last week, it was brought to my attention that the Thank you. All right. What, for those who couldn't hear, those that don't have the microphone, uh, uh, what, what was being said is we have gutters over in the parish hall that are clogged. And so we need someone willing to go up and to the ladder and help unclog those gutters. Someone to sort of spot the ladder. And I volunteer to visit in the hospital if it's needed. So please, if you would like to do that, please uh, consider uh, uh, letting... Uh, letting her know, and uh, we'll have um, that cleanup day just for the gutters, okay? Well, we're going to begin worship now uh, with uh, hymn 119. As soon as I get to the entrance and you hear the bell ring, hymn 119.
continues with your handout with the lessons, the seasonal greeting as printed is printed at the top. I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. We continue in the Book of Common Prayer on page 124, as I invite you to pray with me the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the faults of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Here our Lord Jesus Christ says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Our first lesson is a reading from the book of Amos, chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O people of Israel, against the whole family that I brought up out of the land of Egypt. You only have I known of all the families of the earth, 
Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Do, t do two walk together unless they have agreed to meet? Does a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Does a young lion cry out from his den if he has taken nothing? Does a bird fall in a snare on the earth when there is no trap for it? Does a snare bring up from the does a spring bring up from the ground when it has taken nothing? Is a trumpet blown in the city and the people are not afraid? Does disaster come to a city unless the Lord has done it? For the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. The lion has roared, who will fear? The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy? Proclaim to the strongholds as in Ashdod and to the strongholds in the land of Egypt and say, Assemble yourselves on the mountains of Samaria and see the great tumults within her and the oppressed in her midst. They do not know how to do right, declares the Lord, those who store up violence and robbery in their strongholds. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, an adversary shall surround the land and bring down your defenses from you, and your strongholds shall be plundered. The word of the Lord. Be Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 18. The psalm will be said responsively by whole verse. O Lord, you have searched me out and know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts from afar. Indeed, there is not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so excellent I cannot attain it. Where shall I go then from your spirit, or where shall I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the grave, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, even there shall your hand lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, Even the darkness is not dark to you, and the night is as clear as the day. The darkness and the light to you are both alike. For you yourself made my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and my soul knows it very well. My bones were not hidden from you when I was made. Your eyes beheld my substance while I was yet unformed, and in your book were all my members written. Which day by day fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How dear to me are your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 17. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each of you says, I follow Paul or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, <clears throat> so that no one may say that you were baptized in my name. I did also baptize the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, Jesus withdrew into Galilee. And, leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulon and Naphtali, so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light, and those dwelling in the region and shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. For from that time Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, Jesus saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed Jesus. And going on from there, Jesus saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and Jesus called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I'm going to invite Tina Rhodes up, and I'll invite you to join with me in prayer as she is going to share with us the Holy Spirit. A teaching on the Holy Spirit. Hopefully the Holy Spirit will still come. Uh, <laughs> Heavenly Father, I ask your special anointing at this hour on our sister Tina. May her words be your words to us. May the Holy Spirit pour down upon us as the rain pours down outside Amen. and fill us to the brim with your holy, divine presence. In Christ's name and power we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. Well, good morning. good morning. It's a joy to be back with you this morning. And I want to invite the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, just come and teach us the ways of Christ. Who is the Holy Spirit? Where does the Holy Spirit reside? Why do we need the Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit do? Can we see or recognize the Holy Spirit in our lives? Can we hear the Holy Spirit speaking to us? How do we recognize the truths that are taught by the Holy Spirit? It's a lot of questions but very important ones to ask and to understand. Now, a few weeks ago, I talked to you about prayer, our time with the Lord. Prayer is foundational to us in being able to answer all of these questions because the truthful richness of the Holy Spirit and why we as Christians have been given the Holy Spirit begins in our personal, everyday, everywhere, living relationship with our Heavenly Father. When we are baptized, we are baptized in the name of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now the Holy Spirit marks us as a child of God, a member of Christ's body worldwide, and we are marked and sealed as his own, and we become an inheritor in the kingdom of God. And as a Christian, we have a responsibility as a family member to reflect who we are, a follower of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit enables us to live, move, and have our being every single day. In John's Gospel in chapter 14, Jesus promised us the Holy Spirit before he was crucified. And he said, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. And he goes on to say the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him 
nor knows him. But you, you know him, for he lives with you, and he will be in you. This Holy Spirit then is quite an intimate treasure that res resides in each believer. 1 Corinthians 3.16 tells us we are God's temple that resides, um, we, that, excuse me, that we are God's temple, and that's because the Holy Spirit resides in us. The Holy Spirit gives each of us direct access to our Heavenly Father, and this counselor will teach us all things. This is why our prayer life is so important. You and me, we need to know what the Lord is saying to us. It is important for each of us to know how we hear so that we can be blessed, but also in turn bless others so that they too may come into the loving knowledge of our Heavenly Father. Philip Yancey, an author, once said, I cannot control the voice of God or how it comes. I can only control my ears, my readiness to listen, and quickness to respond. His quote took me to an image in scripture that I absolutely love, and that image is the shepherd and the sheep. Jesus being the shepherd, and you and me, we're the sheep, but together we're the flock. The Gospel of John in chapter 10 pictures that shepherd opening the gate to the pen and the sheep know his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and then he leads them out and when he has brought them out he goes ahead of them and his sheep follow because they know his voice. The shepherd's calling do you hear his voice? John 10 says, we do hear his voice, and we know his voice, and the shepherd knows our name. Boy, that's quite an intimate relationship, isn't it? Why would the Father want us to know his voice? Well, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope, and a future. And our Psalm 139, which we read this morning, it tells us that you and I were formed and fashioned by our Heavenly Father. We're fearfully and wonderfully made, and he has placed within each one of us gifts and talents to be used for his kingdom purposes right here on earth. The Lord has plans for the uniquely created person that you are. And this is all communicated through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is alive, active, and very capable of speaking to us. And will speak in ways that capture us uniquely. So, if we're not hearing his voice, it is not the Holy Spirit's inability to communicate with us. The shepherd is speaking do you hear his voice? Do you want to know the plans he has for you? The Holy Spirit is a gift to you and marks you as one of the shepherd's sheep. As we live into the life that has been given to us, the Holy Spirit is our teacher, our guide, our protector, our counselor, our comforter, our provider. Every Christian needs to know and be aware of the Holy Spirit in their life and how the Holy Spirit speaks uniquely to them. How can you know how to live kingdom living if you do not know how your king speaks or what he orders, what his orders are for you? In John 14, 15, Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. We each need to know what we have been commanded to do so we can respond and so we can just show Jesus we love him. Now listen to this. Jesus takes that thought even deeper. He says, whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. 
He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. So, God's love enables us to love people in this broken and fallen world. And when we see in our lives or, or the lives of other people love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, we see the Holy Spirit at work. This you know and we call the fruit of the Spirit. Because we are each uniquely created by God, there's only one you, and there's only one me, but he manifests this fruit in us in ways that is uniquely us. And he blesses people through us who are around us. So when we pray, I call it checking in with the Lord, um, we listen, we trust, and obey, and the Spirit does his work. So this morning, I really want to focus today on how do you hear the Holy Spirit? Now, I want to say our age, how old we are, listen carefully. It has nothing to do with our ability to hear the Lord speaking or to use us in ministry. The Holy Spirit uses all of our senses. He's extremely creative and will use any means possible to help us, to speak to us, and to get our attention. I'd like to give you an example of how the Lord can get our attention when we're in positions or in times where we just, we need that immediate answer. And I would like to tell you a story about our second daughter, Carrie. Carrie um, had finished high school and had gone uh, to a discipleship training school with Youth with a Mission, and she was in Australia. And she had finished the course, and she was at the point where she had to decide, am I going to stay in Australia, or do I want to go home? And she was really tossed and turned about this situation. And so she was riding on a tram going back to the place where she was staying in Australia, and she asked the Lord the question because she needed to call us and let us know what she was doing. She says, Lord, I just need to know right now. I need to know right now, what do you want me to do? And all of a sudden, she looked out the window and there was this big brick wall that was passing by and on the wall was graffiti. And the graffiti said, the graffiti said Bud is here. She immediately knew the answer. And let me tell you why. Bud was a, was a private nickname that she and her best friend, they each had nicknames, and her best friend called her Bud. And so she knew nobody in the world except possibly this friend, and God knew that. And what he said to her was, Bud is here, and she took that to mean, you remain here, Bud. You remain here in Australia. So the Holy Spirit is always trying to communicate with us. He needs our witness to touch people's lives around us. And again, I have to tell you, there's no age limit on serving the Lord. I have another quick little story to tell you. And this is about a lady that was in our congregation at Holy Spirit Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And Anne, everybody in the church knew Anne, but her name was Grandmama Anne. You see, Anne was one of the members in our church who lived to be a hundred years old. And at the time that I'm telling you this story, Anne was probably between 93 and 94 years old. I was teaching a Sunday school class and I always wanted the children to know that you can serve the Lord, you can hear the Lord even when you're very young and you can be obedient. You can hear him speak to you on the playground, in the grocery store with your mama or wherever you are, but God speaks to you and he may have something special for you to do. And so I let them talk about that for a while and then I said, well, let me ask you something. You know, we have Grandmama Ann She's very, very old. Do you think God speaks to her? Oh, and all the children said, well, yes, yes, she does. And I said, well, what in the world, what kind of ministry can Anne do? You know, she doesn't walk very well, and she really can't see too well. And I said, what would, be, what would something a ministry God would give her to do? What could she possibly do? And it got very quiet. And one little girl said, I know what Grandmama Ann's ministry is. She sits in the back every week and 
every week she gives every one of us a hug. She gives us a smile and she says, what is your week about this week? How can I pray for you? That's huge. And I want you to know that actually until you die and you're not here on the earth anymore, you are what? You are in mission in this world right now where you are. Your age has nothing to do with listening and trusting and obeying. The Lord needs you. The Lord needs all of us in his kingdom work now. You were given a sheet as you came in. If you, you can look at it real quick at the top of it, it says samplings of Holy Spirit led communications. This list is a compilation of the many ways that I have experienced the Holy Spirit communicating with me in my life or in my husband Joe's life or in my children's lives or my friends' lives and many of the mentors that I've had. And I've already given you two quick examples. But I hope you'll take time and read this. I hope it blesses you and encourages you to know that the Lord speaks to you too through his Holy Spirit. And as you look at this list, you may never even thought of that was the Holy Spirit speaking. But God is interested and he's speaking and he wants to get in touch with you. Just remember, he is creative and he knows your language. We used to have a Cajun in our congregation that was a cook. He said, there ain't no Cajun chefs. We're all cooks. And he said, when the, God speaks to me, he speaks to me in Cajun French. And I know he's speaking to me. So, that's, so the Holy Spirit knows you. He knows how to touch your life. So if you look at this list, there's really no particular order or importance except the very first thing that is on that list. That's the Holy Spirit communicating to all believers through his word, through his scripture. Looking at this list, every example or manifestation of the Holy Spirit's communication given here has, be, has been used in some way to give attention to something or someone for God's protection, for God's healing, for giving assurance, for strength, for hope, for encouragement, for discipline, but most importantly, just to show the Father's love and his desire to be an active, integral part of our lives. He cares. Our lives matter to him. And he creatively uses each of us if we're just open and willing to do what he says. I want to share another creative experience with a young lady that was in our congregation in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. She too was a, um, a high schooler and she had gone on a mission to China. And part of her group were to smuggle Bibles, but not just Bibles into China, but parts of communist China. And so Andrea Lusk woke up the morning, the day that they were going to have to cross the border. They were allowed to cross the border and go back and forth because they wanted tourists coming in. And so um, she knew that she had seven Bibles um, in the group that she was with that had to get into communist China. There was somebody on the other side waiting. So she woke up that morning and she says, OK, God. How, how do I do this? Because you know they check everybody that goes through. They look into all of the bags that we carry. So the Lord said, okay, Andrea, get up. Put on your one-piece bathing suit. So Andrea put on her one-piece bathing suit. He says, okay, now take those seven Bibles. I don't care where you stuff them, but put them inside that one-piece bathing suit next to your body. Then put on your blouse. Then put on your skirt and then put on that big jacket you have, and you are not carrying a bag. <laughs> Guess what? Those Bibles are there today. And Andrea happens to be a missionary. She and her husband and young son, they're missionaries in Thailand. That's got to be a creative way for God to get his work done, but it was because she listened and she trusted and she did something so stupid as smashing Bibles into her one-piece bathing suit. Please note, as you look at this list, it is absolutely not complete because you cannot box God in. If he wants to use you and you are willing, he's going to be creative. Now, 
The question that I think should arise in you right now is, how can I be sure that this is the Holy Spirit communicating with me? Well, you have to test the Spirit. You test the words, you test the actions, you test the fruit that you see. And to do, to do this, to test this, guess what your helper is? It's your scripture. Does it line up with God's word? Because that's always your plumb line. Does it build up? Does it restore? Does it unify? Does it heal? Does it correct? Does it discipline? Does it encourage? Does it show love? Because the Holy Spirit is about life, rich and full. Now, I do have to say that the Holy Spirit is always trying to communicate with us. And when we feel we cannot hear or see his activity, I've got a few things that have happened in my life that I've had situations where I know I haven't really heard what he had to say, or maybe I didn't want to. But here's some of the reasons, and I want to point them out to you. One, we just don't really like what being, we're being asked to do, so we just keep dismissing the voice. We get busy and we make other things to do. Or we care more about what we know people are going to think or how they will react if we do or say what we're going to do. And that means maybe my spouse, maybe my best friend, maybe my children, maybe my family. Uh, maybe it's a business associate. Or maybe three, we just rationalize what's been said to us and, oh, we just give excuses. We can figure out, I don't have the time right now. and. Um, We'll delay and we just kind of procrastinate and then we just hope it just goes away. Or how about, well, gosh, I think I could do that in a different way. I, oh, I don't know if I really want to go there because that would mean I'd have to do this and I'd, to give up this, I have to think, I, okay. Or maybe we're so self-focused and we have got it. We're not going to bother the Lord with the little things because he can help me handle the big things. But I've got this. And so we really um, shove ourselves off to being so self-focused that we can't even receive communication from people that we know and that we trust in our lives. Much less are we going to hear what God's speaking to us. So you know where the battleground is? It's right here in our mind. That's where the battleground is. So... We have to be willing each day to take captive our thoughts, surrender ourselves and what we think, our expectations, our experiences, the way we've always done things, our actions. We've got to be open to hear and willing to obey. And if we're not willing to obey when the Lord speaks, really what you do is you close yourself off from receiving any needed empowerment to live life right around where you are right now. Okay, so what if you think that you have heard the Holy Spirit and you just step out on what you say and you just immediately jump into it because you're so excited about what you've heard and, and you're, you're going to do what it says, what you think the Holy Spirit's asked you to do, and all of a sudden you do it and it is a failure. You did the wrong thing. You said the wrong thing. What now? Oh, there's good news. There's good news. Because you know what? When you realize you messed it up, God, I'm so sorry. I really thought you were speaking to me. And you know what God does? Scripture tells us he forgives us. And hear this one. He forgets. He moves it as far as the east is from the west. He doesn't remember it. And then he brings redemption and he restores. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I'm a practical person, and so I would feel that I have not really told you much about the Holy Spirit this morning if I couldn't give you some ways that I've learned to, like, listen to the Lord that's helped me to be more attentive. And so I just kind of really quickly want to share that with you. One, I, I just need my regular daily quiet time. I have devotions where God can speak to me through many things. I have practiced and I practice, still practice, moment by moment conversations with the Lord where I'm trying to listen to what he says. And it takes practice and it takes discipline to step out. But most importantly, you've got to be in God's word every day. That's your plumb line. How can you test something if you don't know what God's word has said? 
The other thing is that you've got to be in fellowship in the body of Christ. We have to have a church family. You cannot do this alone. Because from you, I receive accountability. I receive encouragement. I receive covering prayer. Just like you would give somebody encouragement. You would say, well, I'm holding you accountable to what you said. Or you'd be praying for them. And also, you need to be willing every day the gifts and talents that you have, I don't care what season in life you're in, what you used to do, what you're capable of doing right now is important to the Lord. And every day, if you offer that, those gifts and talents, and you ask him, what do you want me to do with this today? He will use that. Remember Grandmama Ann? All she could do was sit and smile and speak and pray for these children, but that's huge. So when we hear the Holy Spirit speak to us, guess what? It just takes stepping out in faith, willing to make a fool of yourself maybe sometimes, and a willingness to just live for the Lord. So in closing today, I have got just a few other quick little short stories that I want to share because I hope that in some way it would make you intentionally to know that the Lord does speak to you, that he does care um, about people, and there are situations um, where he's going to use you, you especially because you he has placed within you those gifts and talents that he needs in that situation. The Lord is interested in the great and the small things of our lives because he desires the witness that we give um, in the world that shows the love and it will change the world around us. The first story I want to tell you is about a healing that took place within our own family, our fourth daughter, Ansley. She was probably about four years old, and we were holding a teaching mission at Holy Spirit, a healing and teaching mission, and we had the Father Mike Flynn in um, to do the teaching mission for us, and he spoke on healing. But before I left to go to the teaching mission, my daughter Ansley started running a fever, and she was really, really kind of cranky and irritable, and so I asked her older sisters to stay home with her. So I go to the teaching mission, and I come home, and I come home to a child who is pox marked, chicken pox, all over, had broken out immediately, and there was not a crevice within her body that did not have these chicken pox. And so I said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do about this? I said, what can I do? It's too late to call the doctor. The Lord said, just pray for her. Pray for her healing. I said, okay. So I said, Lord, please heal Ansley of these chicken pox. So I gave her some aspirin and put her in the bed. <laughs> in the morning I woke up, there was not one pox mark on this child, no fever. And she was back to her happy little spry self. Well, all of a sudden I said, okay, Lord, I guess my concern is, does she get any immunity? And Lord said, well, ask her, pray for her to have immunity. So I said, okay, Lord, give her some immunity. The next morning I wake up and she has two pox marks. So I'm trusting the Lord gave this child her immunity that day. The next story I want to tell you about happens between Joe and myself. And this was an occasion we had just met and we had just started dating and I had been dating another young man. So I was kind of going, do I want this guy or do I really want to invest in the relationship with Joe? And so Joe had come up to, he was at the Citadel and I was at Converse <laughs> College in Spartanburg and he had come up one Saturday because uh, I guess he had gotten a weekend or whatever. And so we had our date and he had just taken me back to the dorm that I was staying in that summer. And he had walked away and I was watching him leave in the distance and I was going over in my mind, do I want this guy or do I want to date this guy, Joe? And audibly, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want you to hold on to this guy because I have something for the two of you to do. And here we are 51 years later together, loving and trying to listen to what the Holy Spirit's asking us to do. I have two more stories, but this story is a very hard story to tell. But it's a story that we as all parents know 
um, that there are times in our children's lives where we have to make a decision about what we're to do to allow them to go and to be a part of. And all of us as parents, we want to protect our children. Well, guess what? The Lord wants to be able to answer that too. And the Lord does talk to us when we pray to him about our children. This is the story of our third daughter, Stacy. And she was a junior in high school. And she had some friends that I liked, and she had some friends that I kind of tolerated. But the ones that she was asking to go to this party with were the ones that I just kind of tolerated. And so she was asking to go to this party. I really didn't want to, but I promised her, because she always say, have you prayed about it, Mama? And I, so I told her, I said, yes, I've prayed about it, and guess what? I said, I have that feeling in my spirit, the one that makes me almost feel like I want, I'm sorry, I want to throw up. And I said, I have that feeling. And you know when I have that feeling that that is a no. I said, I don't have any reason. The Lord didn't tell me why you cannot go to this party. But I know in my heart that it is for protection and it is for your life. So I had a child that stayed home, was very angry. But in the morning, we heard that the friends that she was to be with, that they had been to a party and there was alcohol. The little girl that was driving the car that they were all in, she did not drink, but everybody else in the car was drunk. And they happened to be taking one of the little girls home and they went down this dark street where the city had been redoing the electrical systems and they had left several of their big trucks parked along the side of the road and you couldn't see them very well. But anyway, the little girl was driving and she was going probably a little bit faster than she should have been and she did see the trucks, but there was not much room for her to get by the trucks. So she swung out to go by the trucks, but stayed pretty close to those um, city's trucks and what she didn't realize was at the same time that one of the girls in the back had already rolled her window down and she stuck her head out. The child was decapitated. And so I, I tell this story because God protects and there's a reason sometimes he protects in miraculous ways. It wasn't so for that child, but it was so for this child because this child today is a missionary in Australia. She and her husband, she's married to a Samoan, and they have a ministry with rugby where they travel internationally with this, and the rugby ball is their tool. But, so I share that because God does protect. And the last one is just a simple, really quick thing that just happened to me so that you'll realize it's not, it is a day-to-day -day thing and it is a moment-to-moment -moment thing as the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Last week, I went to a study on Monday at Holy Comforter Church and there were 14 ladies in this group and me, and I'm not gonna tell you who the other person was, but both she and I came with our books and we got in the group and 12 other ladies in the group, they all had a different book from us. They all had the same one and the two of us didn't. And so we could not really participate. So after the group, I told her, I said, I'm going to Books a Million and I'm going to go see if they have this. And if they have it, I will get us a book. And so she said, well, I will pay you for it. I said, okay. So I go to Books a Million and guess what? They have three books. I buy two books. And so I'm driving to her house and I get to her door. But before I get to her door, the Lord just whispers to me and he said, don't let her pay, just bless her. So I gave her the book. That was a joy for me to be able to do. So I guess what I'm trying to tell you, there are little ways, there are big ways, but God desires to speak to you and he's speaking. And so in closing, I would like, I would like to pray this prayer for all of us. Loving God, Fill each of us so much with your divine Holy Spirit that our words and actions will enrich the lives around us. Open our ears to hear you speaking. May each of us see each day as an opportunity to serve you, Lord, and bear witness to your love for people so they in turn will come into the saving knowledge of Jesus the Christ. 
May your Holy Spirit fill us with power to witness to the dark and changing world around us. I also pray that each one of us here today, that in our morning thoughts and actions of you, Lord, find us saying, here I am, Lord. Send me. Speak. For I am listening. You know the shepherd's calling. Do you hear his voice? Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thank you, Tina, very much. You're welcome. Um, oops, oops. Tina has shared a lot with us this morning, and some of us have better hearing than others. God willing and the internet cooperating, by this evening I will have the service online on our webpage, and also Holy Cross has a YouTube uh, account and page, and so all of our um, sermons, all of our worship services that we have are available on the, on the YouTube page. So what she gave us in December is on that YouTube page. And this afternoon you have two, you'll have two options. The YouTube page or our website will have this service and her message to us. So I want to uh, encourage you if you would like to hear it again uh, or, or want to have just the opportunity to know more, um, please use that resource available. I've also asked Joe and Tina during communion uh, they will go to the entrance of the church, and if you receive communion and would like prayer from them, prayer for the Holy Spirit, prayer for healing, whatever you want to pray for, they will pray with you and anoint you with oil. And that will be uh, at the entrance of the church uh, as you receive communion. Please feel free to have prayer uh, over you and for you by Joe and Tina. So I want to give you that option also. We'll continue now with the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is found on page 127 of your Book of Common Prayer. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten of uh, <laughs> eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to kneel as you're able, and Debbie will lead us in the prayers of the people found on page 128. The prayers of the people are found on page 128 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Foley, our Archbishop, Chip, our Bishop, Michael, our Rector, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy. 
We pray for our missional partners in the Diocese of Masindi Katara, Uganda, the Diocese of Egypt, and Roger and Joanne Griffin serving in Mexico, for all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially Joseph, our president, and Henry, our governor. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Glenn, Joy, Natalie, Koa, Anne-Marie, Pearl, Robin, Blake, John, Angela, Lamar, Linda, Donna, Nora, Rachel, Betty, Anne, Tom, Rona, Joni, Gary, Sharon, and we pray also for baby Bella. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, and for the Pack family, in thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Continue on page 130. Let us simply confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we come to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of His great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to Him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to Him. Jesus said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite you to stand as we pass the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with your spirit. God's peace. Our operatory hymn is hymn 117.
of your book of common prayer, page 132. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We give them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who took on our mortal flesh to reveal his glory, that he might bring us out of darkness and into his own glorious light. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. 
We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and be in us. Amen. Joe and Tina, I'm going to invite you also to come forward so that you can receive communion. The body of Christ, bread of heaven. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of Christ. Again, those who would like to have prayers for healing, anointing with all, and prayers for the Holy Spirit after receiving communion, please go to the entrance of the church, and Joe and Tina will be glad to pray with you and for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 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 Body of Christ. Body of Christ. 
continuing on page 137. Let us pray together the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Before I give you the dismissal, uh, and of course invite you next door for fellowship, I have a confession to make. There have been times in my life where invitations have been extended to me, and I have felt the Holy Spirit tug on me to do something, but fear led me to stay still. Now, you've had an opportunity to have prayer for you at communion, but some of you, like me, may have gone, I would like to do that, but here's your second chance. At the end of the service, Joe and Tina are at the entrance of the church. If you would like prayer, they will continue and be glad to pray for you. So you get a second chance. You don't have to wait till some other time. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Our closing hymn is hymn 127.